Good morning, and welcome to your weekly message from First Congregational Church, Milford, New Hampshire. I'm your pastor, Al Hoyt. Today is Thursday, February 22nd. As you can tell, I'm in my favorite undisclosed location. I uh, picked up a little bit of a chest cold, and so I'm trying to baby it a little bit, and uh, I don't feel bad. Just need to make sure that I keep myself away from everybody. I've tested myself for COVID and I'm negative, so we're good. This Sunday, um, the second Sunday, the yeah, the second Sunday of Lent, February 25th at 9 a.m. is adult Bible study in the parish house. At 10 a.m. is the church service in person and live streamed. There is no Sunday school this Sunday. Um, following the church service, we will have our monthly potluck luncheon. Bring a dish from where you've traveled. I'm going to be bringing a Guatemalan dish, uh, a shredded beef in, in a tomato and pepper sauce called halichas. It's a very mild pepper sauce, but um, I, hope, I hope you'll enjoy it with a, few, with a few corn tortillas to help you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I like making it. On Tuesday, February 27th, the Sauhegan Valley Chorus will be rehearsing in the sanctuary. Wednesday, February 28th, from 6 to 6.30 is the soup and bread supper. Uh, from 6.30 to 7.30 is the Lenten Bible study. And at 7.30 is the church council meeting. Um, that'll be a hybrid meeting and the link will go out that afternoon. Thursday, February 29th, happy leap year day. From 9.30 in the morning until 10, you can drive up to pick your communion elements if you're one of those who worships from home. And at 7.30 is choir rehearsal. Friday, March 1st is the World Day of Prayer. From 9.30 to 1.30 again, you can come in to pick up your communion elements. And Saturday, March 2nd, Christian Ed is going to be doing a vacation Bible school from 10 to 2. That's on Saturday, March 2nd. So, we still need folks to sign up for coffee hour. Um, if you're, if you're um, available, if you'd like to help, um, we still need folks to help host and donate snacks. The sign-up sheets for the coffee hours between now and the end of June will be out on Sundays, and they're always hanging on the refrigerator in the Parish House main kitchen. You are encouraged to bring something for Sunday's potluck. The theme is dishes from where you have traveled. Um, and to be fair, I've never been to Guatemala. I have, however, during one of my research trips to Mexico, been to a Guatemalan restaurant where I was introduced to halichas, and it's quite tasty. Um, altar flowers are still needed. Please sign up for altar flowers. Consider providing flowers for the church service. Um, it's always nice to dedicate flowers in honor or in memory of someone or a group, or just for a special occasion. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call Carol. So, there's so much going on at the church right now, but um, lots of exciting things. We're into Lent now. And I think it's important that we remember that Lent is supposed to be a time of preparation. Um, if you've got your Lenten devotional, I hope you're using it. I hope you're reading it. Hello. Um, this is Gracie. You don't usually get to see much of her except the, the ear right here. Um, but Gracie can't stand to have me sitting here talking to the computer um, without paying attention to her. So. So spend some time in the devotional. Um, you know, very few of us can actually read it, read the whole thing start to finish, um, or, or read it, manage to read it every day. But try to make some time to read the devotional and spend some time thinking about what's in there um, and, and some of the sentiments that it expresses. I think you'll find yourself better for it. Um, and today on... Um, it wasn't today, but recently in one of the daily devotionals, a couple of days ago, Quinn Caldwell, one of my favorite writers, um, wrote from the, uh, it's called Sinners and Sufferers. And Quinn quotes the book of Hebrews, 
chapter 4, verses 14, and chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have a high, great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Every high priest is selected from among the people. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. And Quinn writes, The author of Hebrews says one of the most important qualifications for a high priest is to be a sinner and a sufferer who knows he's a sinner and a sufferer. Neither holiness nor learnedness nor wisdom are the most important, and awareness of your own weakness and folly is the thing. And here's the real kicker. The high priest must not only know that they're a sinner and a sufferer, they must let this information make them kinder. That's some next level religion right there. I mean, any old body can sin and be forgiven, or be hurt and then healed, or go through hell and get stronger, and then be nasty and holier than thou about it. The ex-smoker who rolls their eyes at how gross smokers are. The newly out person who's impatient and judgy with those who are still in the closet. The person who's paid off their student loans and doesn't want anybody else's loans forgiven. But to move beyond sin or suffering or struggle and have compassion for those in its midst, oof. This is what the author of Hebrews says. The most respected religious leaders of whom Jesus is the very best are like this. They know the world is hard. They've seen some things. They've done some things. They have some regrets and some pain. They admit it. And they still haven't become jerks. And Quinn offers this prayer. God, don't let what I've done what I've been, what I've confessed, and what I've overcome make me hot. Let it make me as soft as a savior on a cross. Amen. I particularly like that one because there are very few of us out there that haven't done our share of done our share of sins. There are very few of us that haven't done our share of, of suffering. If you find someone who says they've never suffered, they're probably somebody who's very, very young. So please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I conducted a graveside service yesterday for Robert Bobich. Um, apparently a few people in the area knew him. Um, his, his, they, his family suffered a little bit of a setback the day before the uh, the day of the open house that they had at Smith and Heald um, where Mrs. Bobich fell and broke her hip and so during the time that I was doing the graveside service over in Brookline she was actually ha undergoing surgery to repair her broken hip. So keep the Bobiches in your prayers. And until the next time I see you, take good care of yourself. Take good care of each other, and God bless you all.